All right, so I'm updating my theory because I've changed my mind about something. Consistently, I've said that consciousness is probably kind of like magnetism, yet it's not magnetism. It just has a similar mechanism as magnetism. <clears throat> First, I was thinking that consciousness is a force within the range of forces. Uh, and then I changed my mind and I said that consciousness was a range of forces within the larger range of forces. Um, an analogy being the spectrum of light that's visible to the human eye within the larger spectrum of light. Well, what I've changed my mind on is that I think it's more reasonable to suspect that every force is a kind of qualia, no matter what force you're talking about, including magnetism. Um, and in a uh, previous video I was talking about how one could, in the future, hypothetically, create a, an object that is immortal um, in the sense that it is experiencing something perpetually. And I said that it would be similar to a permanent magnet and you would create it in a, a similar way as you'd create a permanent magnet. Uh, it would just be made out of different materials. And it would appear like a permanent magnet. It would be just a chunk of material. And also, if you put it near your head, it would affect your consciousness. Um, that is, if it's affecting uh, the the spectrum of um, experiences that a human can experience. Okay, see that's kind of like what I've changed my mind on. I've kind of seen it as um, there's a, there's a spectrum of experiences um, that are are um, perceived by human beings. And because of the chemical makeup of our biology, we cannot experience certain things. And of course, magnets do, in that way, affect your brain. I think it's called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Um, obviously, um, it affects your brain. However, and, and I've never experienced uh, TMS personally, but I don't believe that there are any unique experiences connected with that, such as you smell something that you've never smelled before. Um, so it does affect your brain, just doesn't give you an experience that your biology can perceive. So the end conclusion would be that a permanent magnet is already that you could call it an immortal object if you follow that line of reasoning, which is so far the most reasonable line of thinking and keep in mind I could be um, <laughs> completely wrong about all of this I'm just kind of uh, following a line of thought based upon monism and secondly based upon the idea that fields are stereographic projections 
Um, so I could be wrong. 